Father, we bless you this morning, and we praise you for uh, the grace that you've shown us, that you've demonstrated to us. And as we bow in our hearts before you, we pray, Lord, as you've taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us today what you know we need, our daily bread, Lord. And forgive us, Lord, our debts, even as we forgive those who are indebted to us. And Father, I pray that you would lead us not into temptation, be delivering us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And we worship you this morning and thankful to you, God. We thank you. We thank you. I just want to pray according to Psalm 62 this morning, if you have your Bibles. Uh, please turn there as we look to God in, in prayer. The psalmist writes, Truly my soul silently waits for God. Silently waits for God. We take our rest in you, and we rest in knowing, Lord, that you are, are with us and that you love us that there is nothing too difficult for you. And so, Father, this morning, as we have made our petitions before you, we pause and we declare, Lord, that though things have not occurred in some ways like uh, we've longed for, we refuse to yield to the temptations to create our own way to do what we need to do in the flesh. We wait for you, Lord. For from you comes our salvation. It's in you that we live and move and have our being, Lord. We delight in knowing you, God, and serving you. You are the one. You are the one. Yeshua, that's the word there for salvation. From you comes our deliverance. We bless you, Father, this morning. We praise you this morning. Thank you for deliverance through the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for deliverance through the blood of the Lamb. Glory to God. You know, you know that the Lord is present to deliver and it doesn't look like he's doing what he's present to do. That's the time to reaffirm and his, his, his faithfulness, but also to rest in his faithfulness. Is there anybody here today uh, that you know it in your head, but your heart is still just kind of juggling around and feeling uneasy. Yeah, in those times, that's, that's when we really do. We rest anyway, right? We rest anyway because God is what? He is faithful. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. The Bible declares to us in that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Lord, we're looking to you to help us not to yield, but he cannot not yield for us. That's something we alone can do. Hallelujah. He, 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 he cannot forces not to yield. And so as the psalmist prayed, my soul waits. 
Hallelujah. One version reads, I wait quietly before the Lord for my victory comes from him. We you say that to the Lord? I wait quietly before you, Lord. Yeah, that's it. For my victory comes from you. Version reads, my salvation, my Yeshua, is the way it's written in, in uh, Yeshua. Uh, my, my victory comes from him. That's one of the translations of the word of the of the word Yeshua. My victory, my salvation. It also means my help, my deliverance, my security, even my prosperity. Hallelujah. My welfare. Uh, this is this is rich. Well, you know that the one you're waiting on is the source of everything you need, and that includes both natural needs and spiritual needs. Hallelujah. You can rest. You can rest. Oh, God, we bless your name this morning. You see, quietly waiting is the same thing as resting, choosing to rest out of a posture and a spirit of trust. And the Bible to trust means to put your full weight on it. And this word means uh, just that. There's a silence. Uh, There's a sense of total, complete trust in God. Will you tell the Lord, I trust you. Glory to God. I trust you. Sometimes it's important for you and me to say the things we're supposed to do because it helps us. It helps us. This word means to relax, to be still. Not to work, but to relax and, and and to be still. God, we bless your name this morning. I don't know who is here, but I know we all need to relax. We all need to be still. Now the psalmist right, be still and know what? I am God. I'm Elohim. That's the name that God uses when he says, uh, when, when the book of Genesis was written. Uh, and God in all of his creation refers to himself as Elohim. It also means a ruler or a judge and so forth. Sometimes the word was used for out of God and even uh, earthly leadership, but uh, earthly kings and things like that. But in reference to God, he's not an earthly king. He's our eternal heavenly ruler, our eternal heavenly judge. And he's the perfect judge. There's nothing, there's no error in him. It's one thing, you know, you ever call somebody that you knew might get it right, might not get it right. Somebody you knew that would probably get it wrong more than they would get it, was subject to mess up. But when we call upon the Lord, we can wait, can't we? We can rest. We can can cease striving because we know something. God is Elohim. Hallelujah. He's the righteous judge. He is almighty God. He never fails. There's nothing about God that that fails. 
Hallelujah. He is our rock and our salvation. Now, we know what the word uh, salvation means. But what does it mean when God says he is our rock? The word that means that he is our stronghold, he is our retreat. Uh, he is, get this, he's a secure height. Mm. Those days when an army really wanted to have the best advantage against an enemy, they would go into a mountain region, if there was one nearby, and go up, go up. It was considered a high fortress or a high tower. Um, even the eagle, when it's going to shed its feathers and grow new ones, it flies way up before it starts to shedding to get away from any predator that could take advantage of them in that weakened, vulnerable state. And then you and I pray, this is what the psalm is saying. We are in God, and God is compared his the dimension of where he is and how he functions is compared to this height. You're in a place, it's really referred to as a secure place, far above where the enemy can go. Now, we know, we know that this is spiritual. This is a spiritual dimension. Though the enemy was able in the book of Job to walk to and fro and have a conversation with God, there is a certain place, a dimension, the enemy can go. Uh, the secret place of the Most High. I will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In the book of Revelation, chapter 4, when John was uh, summoned to, to, to see certain things that the Lord wanted to show him. God had to give him permission. He had to give him an invitation. He was in the spirit on the Lord's day, the Bible says. But there were still certain things he could not see. I wonder if you're listening to me. There were certain things he, he could not see until he was summoned to come up here. I, I want to encourage you this morning, no matter how difficult Life may be for you right now. You are in not only the view of the enemy, but, but in a sense you're in a dimension in God, in Christ, that he can't get to. He can't get to you there. He can't do anything to you there. Glory to Jesus. If there's sickness in your body, if there is really a press on your mind and it feels like you're mentally losing it, there is a dimension in God. This is what gives me so much confidence and courage and peace where the enemy cannot reach. It doesn't make any difference how much he's threatening us, what he tells us he's going to do, how he tells us he's going to scatter us and destroy us. He's got to get to that dimension in God to where you are, that secret place in God. And that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's impossible. It's impossible for that to happen. He alone, he alone, glory to God, is our rock. He alone is our salvation. He alone is our defense. 
Do you hear it this morning? Do you hear it this morning? He alone. I started with that last one is our, is our, is our defense, but it, because it refers to the rock means a cliff, an elevated place. But God is that place. He is a dimension in that place where he has us in Christ Jesus. That is what? Impenetrable. The devil can't get there. No demon can get there. It feels like that because the demons are, are real or, or that presence is so real, but it's impossible. Oh, God, we bless you this morning. Let's go on. This is what helps us not to yield uh, to temptation. How long, the psalmist writes, will you attack a man that you may murder him, all of you, like a leaning wall, like a tottering fence? Come on with it. They only talk about the enemy consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Don't know who the psalmist was talking about here. But all of us have had that experience of those who watch and longingly watch for us to fall. But listen again, and they listen with a certain motive. They watch with a certain motive. But he says, my soul, talking to himself. And sometimes you have to do this. Your thoughts, your emotions, even your will, part of your soul, the deepest part of you. Now, with the Hebrew mind, said the soul was wasn't uh, was no different. It was just the inward part. And so you can say to your inward self, "Wait silently for God alone." Why? My expectation. Is of him. Do you, do you, if you're going to have an expectation, <laughs> glory to God. If you're going to expect something, it needs to be of him. This word, interestingly, for an expectation means literally kava. It means a cord and an, atta- a, an attachment. See, something that that has a cord on it, is attached to something. Come on. And there's an expectation, that's really what the word means figuratively, that you have when you have a cord. There's an expectation. That's what the word means figuratively. It's a hope. It means to to live for something. A thing that you long for. Come on. <laughs> my my expectation is from him. This is a preposition in the Hebrew, and it means from. It may be translated a little bit different in some of the Bibles, or what, but it means from him. It's one thing to have an expectation that's from yourself. And some of those are good. God meets some of those when they're in accord with his will. But when you know that the Lord gave you the expectation or the Lord inspired the expectation, that expectation when it comes from God, that's a certain thing. So the scripture tells us we can wait how? Silently. Silently. Oh, bless the Lord. Father, we thank you for the grace. See, that silence is not a silence where where we're stewing or where we're just dumbfounded to the point where we just don't know what to believe for. But it does mean that we're quiet. And it's it's a rest that comes out of us, out of a knowledge Lord said the same with Yitzhak tomorrow. We're going to be talking about how to exercise our spiritual senses again. And at one of the 
important things that on my heart to to teach is that it's not just a silence in ignorance. It's a silence based upon a knowing. Mm -hmm. A knowing that we have in the Lord. We exercise our spiritual senses. We 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 do what we do based upon a knowledge that we have received from God. For God alone. For God alone. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation. Our expectation is from you. What are you expecting from the Lord today? What are you expecting of the Lord today? Is that expectation from God? Is it from God? If it's from the Lord, you can rest. (laughs) You can rest. Finally, he says, he alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Why? I'm already in the secret place. I'm already in a place that's inaccessible. The enemy can't get to me. No force, no word, no demon spirits, no action, no curse can penetrate the presence of God. Why? In God, next verse, it's my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is where? Is in God. It's in God. And so I'm I'm in a I'm in a place uh that's gonna result in honor, splendor. The word is translated here, glory. It's all there. So why run ignore what I know about God? And what I'm learning in God. He's impenetrable. He's insurpassable. The enemy can't get through to that place where I am. I can't say it enough this morning. The enemy cannot get through. It doesn't make any difference what it looks like, what it feels like. He can't get through. Oh, bless the Lord this morning with me. Let us exalt his name together. You are worthy, Lord, to receive glory, to receive honor. Great and awesome is the Lord our God. So we end it here. It says, trust him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Pour out your heart this morning. Come on, let's just pour out. God, I bless you. I worship you. I honor you this morning. I thank you for your goodness. Come on, pour out your heart. Pour out your heart. Pour out your heart. Surely men of low degree are a vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. There are no big eyes and little U's in God. If they are all weighed on the scales, they are all lighter than vapor, the word says. Oh, bless his name. Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, don't even set your heart on them. Why? Why? God has spoken. Twice I've heard this. Power belongs to God. Somebody declare it this morning. Power belongs to you. Your authority, your ability surpasses everybody. That's his power. For you render to each one according to your work. And so we bless you this morning, God. We praise you this morning, God. In the final time, part of this prayer, we lift up our hearts to you. There is none like unto you. We bless and magnify your holy and righteous name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You're worthy to be praised and adored. Hallelujah. We lift up. We lift up your name this morning, God. 
You have the strength. You have the might. You alone have the ability. But you're enough. And we are in you. And we rest in you today. We bring everything, all of our concerns before you this morning. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the ability to resist the temptation to yield to the force of hell, to the powers of darkness, to the thoughts and the suggestions of the poles to deny you, to reject you, to oppose you, to throw our hands up and to give in and to give up to the will of the enemy. We refuse to do it, for you are our Yeshua. You are, hallelujah, you are our help. You are our deliverer. You are our peace. You are our victory. We bless you this morning, God. We worship you. And we put all of these concerns before you this morning. You are our strength. You are our strength. Blessed be the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. We sing what? Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Great and mighty are you, God. Mighty in all of your works and all of your wonders and all of your will. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for settling it. You've spoken it more than twice even. Power belongs to you. Power belongs to you. We worship you. There's none like unto you. And we, we release our faith in you. We rest. I speak to my spirit this morning. Rest. Rest. I speak to you this morning. Rest. Whatever time of day it is you're listening to this prayer, rest. Settle down. <laughs> Be calm. Be silent in the presence of the Lord. Know that he's here. Release your faith. Worship him. Great and awesome are your God in all your ways and all of your dealings. We delight in knowing you. We delight in serving you. We delight in lifting up our hands. Great and mighty are your God. Well, Lord, I pray that the rest of this day would be as you desire for it to be in terms of our response, our communion with you. We set our heart in agreement with what you desire to do because we agree with you. Thank you for being our refuge. Thank you that our hope is not uh, in vain. Thank you, Lord. We don't have to reduce ourselves to trusting in some oppressive, ungodly means. We don't even put our trust in the increase of riches. It's in you and what you've spoken. We praise you, God. I thank you for the patience and the grace to endure even when it seems as though you are almighty God and you're not demonstrating that. We trust you anyway. Blessed be your name. Oh, the Lord strengthen you today and grant you his peace. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. He's your refuge. Trust in him at all times. You're in an inaccessible place where yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Amen. It is so. Glory to the Lord. Looking forward to being able to join back with you again tomorrow and uh, have a wonderful day in God. And may everything that you set your heart out to do, be settled in a way that you that you are certain is pleasing to the Lord. And while you're waiting, rest. Don't be fidgety, just rest. He knows every deadline. Rest. Rest in the Lord your God. God strength to you today. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>